His phone even went off at one point and it was like B with a little like so I'm assuming. Not crazy. Like Beyonce was calling him, but <laughs> and he said, I'll get that if you want, mate. <laughs>going on guys i'm joseph and welcome to the very very first episode of unfiltered on football fits now today we have a very very special guest in the building listen he needs no introduction this is spurs new number 10 england international and correct me if i'm wrong you were you not a uh, premier league player of the month you don't need to be corrected on that one <laughs> Listen, James Madison is in the building. Madison, how you, how you doing, bro? Good to see you, bro. Good All good, you, thank man. you. You're bro, right. How you doing, man? Very good, thank you, yeah. Life's good at the minute. We've had a good start to the season. Off the pitch stuff's good, so in a good place. So as you said, bro, you know, new at Tottenham. You just came back off England training. You're rolling to start the season. You know, how, how are you feeling? You know, there's been so much going on. Just how are you feeling? Yeah, well, good. It's, it's obviously sometimes it can be a bit, a bit difficult for players these days, when you when you go to move to a new club and you make a big move, where you move city, you have to move your family and, and stuff, and even just getting to know new tactics, new new teammates, everything. There's a lot more that goes on than what what people see from the outside. But to be fair, it's been it's been a fairly easy transition for me, and that's almost like a credit to the people at the club how they've made me feel going in. And I feel like I've been there for ages, you know, even though it's, it's only we're only five weeks into the season, but. Um, so life's good all on that front and, and we've had a good start to the season, which I hope can continue. I mean, you just won the Premier League Player of the Month for August. How would you accredit you know, your current form to, what would you attribute that to? Is that you know, what, what the manager's telling you or some of your teammates or you know, what would you point that towards? Stick it, in, stick it in the back of the net normally helps. <laughs> and I've had a couple of goals early on, which is good because as an attacking player, you want to... Uh, you don't want to have to wait too long for your first goal, you know, because it can start to play on the mind, especially as an attacking player, like I said. So um, a bit down to that, a bit of me just feeling free, to be fair. The new manager's so good, he's, he, he lets me express myself in, a, in my role, you know, in the team. So the type of player I am and, and the type of person I am, I like, I'm at my best when, when I'm free and able to go and, go and express myself and, and be myself, obviously, with limitations of... of, <laughs> of um, discipline and stuff uh, off, off, the, off the ball and, and, and stuff like that but um, in general no just letting me have that freedom to play and create and, and, and do what I do and that's obviously uh, reap the rewards for myself and, and, and ended up with player of the month yeah. All right, let's take it right back to the beginning obviously you know you were born and raised in Coventry. Coventry yeah. That's right so that's you um, your mother your father and your younger brother what was young matters like growing up? Good kid, cheeky bad chappy, kids. Cheeky chappy, I'd say. If you asked, if you asked some of my teachers in, in the past, they'd probably say, hard working, good lad, but maybe with a little cheeky side to him, I would say. But um, no, yeah, grew up in Coventry, absolutely loved it. Ended up playing for Coventry, which, which as a little boy was my dream, you know, then, and just to, to represent my hometown. Um, being from Coventry, all my friends from Coventry, family all from Coventry, so uh, that was a great feeling. and. I have, I have good memories of those early days, to be honest. Uh, good, good time in my life. Give us a story, something nice that you remember from your childhood. What, anything? Or, anything. Or, it could oh, be wow. funny. It could be... I don't know. I'm, I'm going to leave that open to you. That is an on-the-spot question. Uh, a story from my childhood. <laughs> uh, OK, there's one from... From primary school, I guess. Mm -hmm. First time I ever... The head teacher had to call my parents, so there was a bit of a... Um, my mum weren't too happy when, when she found out it was the head teacher calling her because oh, no. I'd, I'd gotten into a bit of trouble. But it was because I climbed the building to get on the roof just because the football went on the roof and it was the only football we had to play with at, play at, like, at lunchtime. Yeah. And I guess I love footy that much, so that was, <laughs> that was the only reason I, I climbed up the little, the little gutter thing to, to get it. But, uh, so it was all in good faith, yeah. it was all just to keep the game going for the boys. And I guess just because I love the game, you know, well, that's what I'm putting it down to anyway. But uh, yeah, so call home from the head teacher would be the story, but all in all for footy. Hey, listen, but, I mean, you landed where you are today, so mm. I guess that was a part of the journey. Um, you've got a tattoo tattooed on you that reads, the love of family is life's greatest blessing. Doing your research, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, we do our research. First tattoo that yeah. was as well. Oh, wow. First ever tattoo, 17 or 18, I think. 
I mean, that's a, that's a really strong message. How uh, big is family to you? How big of, of a value does family you know, place in your life? Oh, everything, everything. Um, anyone who knows me knows how close I am with my mom, my dad, my brother. And now I'm, I've started my own family with my girlfriend and we have three children now. Um, newborn twins into the family 10 weeks ago, so carnage in the Madison household at the minute. But um, no, family's everything. And, and that was the first tattoo I got because that, that quote means a lot to me. Because mm. It is life's greatest blessing. You have your best moments and, and all the success I've had so far in my career would have probably been nothing if I wasn't there to share it with them. You know, success is, you feel most proud of it when you get to share it with, your, with the people closest to you. And especially my parents and my brother, I have such a good relationship with them and speak to them every single day without fail. They come. They come to every game, home and away, like, we're, we're such a tight-knit family, so, um, yeah, that was the reasoning behind the, the first tattoo, yeah. Speaking about your parents, um, the case for a lot of footballers is, you know, their parents or their family, whoever it may be, you know, making a lot of sacrifices for them to get to the position in which they are today. Is that, is that the case for you? Oh, 100%, yeah, yeah. Um, when I was young, and obviously the, it's slightly different now in academies, that is bit more access now in terms of, especially at the big clubs to be able to provide for 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 kids and, and families who aren't able to travel and, and but that wasn't the case when I was young at Coventry the times have obviously changed a little bit from I don't know 18 years ago or whatever it was when I first joined and uh, like my dad driving me up and down the country on a Sunday morning sometimes even for the, the the team for the year above where I wouldn't even wouldn't even end up playing you know I'd be taken as a substitute and not even get on the pitch but my dad would wake up on a Sunday morning and drive me there himself and mum and dad didn't have a lot of money growing up um, just a normal family really and but it still it do it like sacrifice everything to take me and stuff and and like I said there was times when I wouldn't even play so it'd drive me to Wales or to Newcastle or wherever it would be to, for me to go and play and, and I wouldn't even end up playing so sacrifices that which is why I'm so grateful and why I still try and share my success with them because ultimately I wouldn't have, be in this position sat here now if it wasn't for them you know so no nah, most definitely I mean obviously now you're a parent yourself like you mm. said earlier I mean on social media you're quite outwards with your family I've seen mm. loads and loads of photos of your son you recently just had twins I mean talk about what father is like is there everything you expected it to be uh good question um I wasn't really sure to be honest I was a <laughs> I don't really ever get nervous in many situations, but about but becoming a father was was probably what made me most nervous because it's the unknown in it. You can have people around you who are, who have been a dad telling you what what it's like and all this, but ultimately I think you just learn on the job, don't you? You, you do it. I don't know if you're a father, but you do it as as you go along. You kind of learn for I'm yourself. Not a dad. Hey, listen. So, it's, so when <laughs> you just put it, that out there for yeah, anyone. <laughs> yeah, but so when it's your time, what I'm saying is when it's your time. Yeah. You, you'll have people telling you what what to do, how, it, what, how it's the best thing in the world, you do this, you do that, but yeah. ultimately you learn on the job and you just go with it, you know, and it's been, it's been unbelievable, like probably the best thing that's ever happened to me, my little boy, Leo, who's, who's two now, proper character, obviously the twins are newborn, so at that stage it's just a lot of changing nappies, a lot yeah. of feeding, a lot of crying, sleepless a, lot of, nights. a lot of sleepless nights, but Leo, my boy's at a great age now where like, he likes kicking the ball around, running around, being a nuisance, comes to all the match days in his kit and stuff, so he's at that, precious age where, where every moment's every moment's beautiful yeah all right cool so before we even move on from you know our family talk you came out in a recent interview and talked about how you like to be the man <laughs> <laughs> at, at the roast mm, dinner mm, listen no, there's, this is where we're going to clear this up <laughs> So listen, so that one went flying all over mm. Twitter. Listen, you've been going viral. There's been a whole load of memes. <laughs> I know, I've seen them. They've been put in my group chat with my friends, most of them. Some of them really funny, to be fair. So right now, I'm going to give you the chance to set the record straight. What, what was you trying to say no, in, that, in that message? I'm glad you asked. The initial, uh, the initial conversation was actually about a showman instead of a, a main man. Okay. And about how Spurs have always had a showman. You know, Gaza, Klinsman, Deli, Ericsson. They've always had like that kind of midfield creative showman. And I kind of said that, and they said, is that like a conscious thing, like that you like to be that guy? I said, well, I'm kind of like that as a person as well as a footballer, if you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I like to be life of the party, you know, telling the jokes and stuff. And even at a roast dinner, I would be like the, the life, you know? 
the main man at roast dinner headline kind of killed me because some of the memes were hilarious. That was yeah. the only thing you could think of in that moment. <laughs> yeah, but, you, but you know what I'm trying to say? I should, okay, if yeah. I'd said it, if I go for dinner, it might not have gone so viral. But no, I didn't mind. I, I liked all the banter and stuff. So some funny pictures out there. So you've joined Tottenham over this summer. Big signing. You've come in. Tottenham's new number 10. Vice captain in your first game. Just talk about, you know, what it feels like to come from your previous club to a big club like Tottenham and just, you know, talk about all those emotions and, you know, what it really took you to get to this point. Mm. Well, Leicester's a big club as well. Let's, let's, let's just say that before we go any further. Um, but no, Tottenham is obviously one of the, one of the big six clubs and a, and, a, and a fantastic club. Even in my short period, I can see why it's such, such a loved club and, and why it has such a big fan base. Um, like I said earlier, I, I've, set, I've settled in really well. Becoming the vice captain was was unexpected. I didn't the gaffer didn't tell me, didn't give me any pre warning on, on that he was gonna gonna be give Son the captaincy and me the me and Romero the vice captain. He he's not that type of guy. He'd rather just say it there and then. And I was a little bit taken back, as in like I didn't expect it because I'd only just walked in the door. But but an honour nonetheless. Um, and yeah, like like you said, all the, all the things are going well at the minute. The stuff we took touched on at the minute. There's going to be obviously. Tougher times down the road, it's not always plain sailing and we're ready for that. I'm 26 now, I'm experienced, I've been around the game long enough now that I know, I know that there's like a roller coaster a season, but you've got to enjoy the highs while they're there. Um, and yeah, it's been a great start and we've got a massive game on, on uh, Sunday, North London Derby, so really looking forward to that one. Throughout your career, you've had so many different stints and twists and turns to get mm -hmm. to the point where you are today. Um, you also had a lot of different, you know, teammates, different characters in the changing room. Who, for you, whether club or country, was your most, you know, interesting teammate or most beloved teammate? Good question. Good question. Most interesting teammate. Wow. I think I think purely just because of how he is, I'd have to say Jamie Vardy's definitely up there. Oh, tell us why. Because. He's just a one-off character, you know. He's a, oh, he's an absolute legend, and he's a he's a great guy and and, and a close friend. But he's he's a funny guy. He's a, everything you think you see with Jamie Vardy is is what you get, kind of. Really? The, yeah, the, the red <laughs> balls, the the um, Mickey taking of other fans and stuff like that. He's a he's a proper wind-up merchant and. Uh, so an interesting character, but a great character. Brilliant for the dressing room. Loves winding people up. Loves playing pranks and messing around and and being being the main man. But uh, a top guy. Someone I'm still in contact with now, even though I've left the club. But um, I'd probably say probably say Jamie. Yeah. And I mean, throughout football, you've made you know so many relationships and mm. some close, you know, very very close relationships. Who would you say are you know some of your closest friends in football? God, that's another good question. Um, I don't want to annoy anyone. I don't want to forget <laughs> anyone. Um, I've got lots of good friends. I've got lots of good friends. Yeah. I don't think I'd be able to pinpoint one. I'd have too many WhatsApps after the interview goes out. I think. <laughs> you know, lots of good friends. Like especially like within the England setup now as well. There's a, a real good group there. Like I'm, I'm close to, even outside of that from previous clubs. There's too many to name. I'd say. Talk about you know the vibe in the England camp now. I mean, it's, from the outside looking in, it seems like a really tight knit group. Talk about what it's actually like. Oh, it's exactly that. Yeah, it's exactly that. To be honest, it's um, Gareth's obviously created a a vibe and a and a feeling of when you when you turn up. It's not like listen. I've heard players in the past. I don't know. I can't maybe not quoting them, but Frank, Frank Lampard said something. I've heard Gary Neville say stuff about what it was like when they used to turn up to represent England on duty, and uh, it, it's nothing like well, how they used to say about. You obviously have club rivalry, right? So. For example, I'm at Tottenham now. Arsenal was our biggest rivals, and the North London derby is massive for all the supporters and stuff. But that doesn't necessarily mean when we go and represent England and we put the three lines on me and Bakayo and Declan and Ramos that uh, we we don't, we're not going to get on, you know, because we're we're playing for the country. And I think that's kind of probably the thing that shifted in the last few years that that Gareth the managers created a dynamic where we all go and get on get along and actually enjoy the camps and enjoy each other's company, but. No, knowing the fact in the back of our head when we go and play Arsenal, we're not going to be mates, you know, for that yeah, 90 minutes. For sure, so um, yeah. the balance is really good and it's, it's a pleasure to be involved in. Hopefully that continues, yeah.
You just signed a brand new long-term deal with Puma. Listen, big congrats on that. Thank you. Um, I mean, how would a young Maddis feel, you know, seeing where you are today, signing a, a long-term deal with Puma, becoming one of the faces of a global brand? Yeah, no, a, a great feeling, obviously. When I first signed for Puma, five-ish years ago now, I would say, um, the reason I wanted to go to Puma was because we had like a vision and a, and a relationship building that, that actually where I felt valued and, and, and really enjoyed the brand. And I, and I think, to be honest, from even from looking back from back to then to now, mm -hmm. the brand's even bigger, even better. The stuffs, the, the clothes, the trainers, the boots, everything about the brand has improved along, along the journey, as, as most things do on an upward trajectory, you know? Um, but no, really excited. Like I said, I really enjoy wearing the brand. It's a brand that I love. I have a great relationship with everyone at the, at the, at the brand that I, that I speak to and I'm in contact with. So uh, only good things, so I'm glad to extend the deal, yeah. I mean, fellow uh, players under Puma, mm -hmm. like Memphis Depay, have got their own lifestyle um, collections with Puma. Is that something that's potentially down the line for you with Puma? Who knows, who knows? We'll have to, uh, we'll have to ask the big dog. We'll have to go and ask some of the big dogs, but... Um, <laughs> Glenn from the background laughing. But um, no, something like that would be amazing, obviously, down the line. You've got to keep doing your on stuff pitch and, and then the rest normally takes care of itself but uh yeah memphis is obviously a a big player and a and a, and a cool guy i think you know so uh, that stuff works really well for him so potentially yeah i'm glad you asked the question because now i can go and push it <laughs> in 2019 you linked up with jay-z talk about what that was like i mean that's not an experience most people get the mm. experience how was that yeah it was amazing to be honest it was, was very interesting. We obviously went to the Puma headquarters in Germany. So we got the jet over, it was a brilliant day. Me and, me and my team and a couple of friends went. Um, it was an amazing day, one, one that I look back now and I'm almost like, did that actually happen? Um, because he was such a nice guy as well, such a humble, down-to-earth guy. We had a chat. I, got a, I think I got a bit lucky that I got to actually sit with him for a little bit and actually have a chat where some of the other players had to go and do other stuff. But my bit was a little bit later, so I got to sit with him and actually have a little bit of a chat for a, try and pick his brain a little bit. Yeah. Um, but just a nice, normal, normal down-to-earth guy who was open, answering, answering the questions I had. His phone even went off at one point and it was like B, who I love that, so I'm assuming. Oh, crazy. Like Beyonce was calling him, but, <laughs> and he said, I'll get that if you want, mate. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, top guy and, and, and left a, left a, a lasting impression on me. Yeah. To how much of a nice, humble guy he was, yeah. I mean, you just said he left, he left a lasting impression on you. There's a lot of debate, you know, on the internet where people question whether they'd rather have 500k up front or dinner with Jay-Z. I'm going to put you on, put you on blast right now. Which one are you choosing? I'll probably take the 500k just so I've already won. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. I think he'd, I think he'd approve because he's a, he's a clever man and he'd say, he'd say I was an idiot if I didn't because I've already won. <laughs> uh, if you'd asked me that six years ago, I might have said Jay-Z. Let's talk about some music. We know you're a big Morgan Wallen fan. Morgan Wallen, yeah. How did you get into Morgan Wallen fan? Uh, do you know what? Well, Morgan's a, a country singer, mm -hmm. and 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 recently I've kind of started listening to a little bit more country because of Harry Kane. Because Harry Kane's a big country music fan, okay. so uh, I don't know if it was at England or it might have even been early pre-season on the tour. He connected up to the speaker and played a couple of uh, Morgan's tunes, and they were they were they were they were sick to be fair. And country music's not for everyone; it's very different. My girlfriend's American; she loves country, but I've never really. I don't know, I've never really got too much into it, but lately, just like country music is my thing at the minute. So when I'm going in the car, a bit of country is what, what I'm listening to because I like to be uh, diverse, you know? Like if you shuffled my phone, it would go from Little Baby to Enrique Iglesias <laughs> to Westlife, you know? So I have a, a, a wide range of, of music uh, taste. But yeah, country is my thing at the minute, so. Damn, I mean, I don't think anyone would have dubbed James Madison as a country nah. music fan. Oh, now nah, you know. Listen, nah, you heard it here first. Mm. Talk about if you've ever been to any, you know, music concerts, which one was your favourite? Good question. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably say, yeah, 
Two, I'd probably say two. I went to go and see Tom Grennan. Ooh. Because he's a good friend. Tom and, Grennan is wicked. Had, no, he put on the, the work for us. We had the VIP. We got to go on the stage. He like shouted me out before he before he sung one of one of my favourite songs of his. Like just literally on the stage to the side. Like, I got to see it up close. So that was a real cool experience. And then saw Calvin Harris at Ushuaia in Ibiza in the summer, which was which was levels. Which is just I uh, could be up there one of the best nights of my life. I think just because it was everything you imagine a Calvin Harris in Ibiza concert would be. You know, uh, real good fun. So I'd probably say them too. I mean, if we spin it back to Spurs, you like country music, so I'm sure they haven't got you on the DJ. He's got the best music taste in the dressing room. Me. <laughs> me. Would you expect me to say anyone else? <laughs> no, we've got to, like, me and Basuma try and, no, but I like, I like country, but that doesn't mean that I'd, I'd play it to the change room. Yeah? That probably wouldn't be the vibe, you know? Like, like I told you, I've got, I've got lot, endless, like endless possibilities of, of songs on my phone. You do like the mix up. We're so going to give you some credit for that as well. Pre game, I wouldn't put on country. Maybe in the car, or maybe like, I don't know, the day before if we're travelling up to uh, to Manchester for a game, bit of, bit of chilled country would be all right. But it's normally me or Basuma. Yeah. But Basuma's very just little baby, little baby, little baby, gunner, little baby. Gunner, he thinks he's a rapper. Baby. You know, he, 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 <laughs> him and uh, I know Tangi's just left, but they would constantly have little baby and rap and a lot of us rap tunes in the in the changing room video and each other dancing you know that sort of vibe but you gotta be able to mix it up in you i mean besides the music um we want to know a bit more about what you're into we know that you're a big gamer yeah which kind of changed when i become a father because <laughs> you don't have the time really but uh no I, I used to i used to like gaming yeah yeah talk uh, about some of your favorite games well, yeah, FIFA, which is EAFC now. Um, I used to love Call of Duty back in the day. Um, to be fair, I haven't. Oh, if I'm being honest, I haven't been a big gamer for a, for a little while now, just because. No. Yeah, time. You don't get that time when you're a parent, and I think you'll understand. And I think <laughs> everyone who's a dad watching will probably know what I mean, because even when the kids are in bed, then the missus is moaning about not spending quality time together. So, uh, gaming's kind of gone down the pecking order. But um, no, I used to, and that's like we spoke about childhood, didn't we? My childhood, I used to like gaming, but yeah. probably not so much now, yeah. So if we talk about in the England camp, who would you say, you know, best and worst gamers that you've gone up against? Well, Harry Maguire and Pickford, they love, they love playing. Really? I know Walks, love, Walks loves Fortnite. Harry and, um, Harry and Jordan often go off and play. They have like, they have like play like scheduled two, two matches of Call of Duty, I think Warzone or whatever oh, it is. Oh, wow. So they, 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 I know they like to, but I know I haven't played. I haven't played any of them at like FIFA for for ages. I used to play against Trent in the under twenty ones. Me and me and Trent were in the twenty ones together years ago. What's the, what's the score sheet looking like? You got him under. I used to batter him, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. No and way. Put that as the headline. If you really? Want. Um, yeah, he used to get obliterated, like Damn, you know, like Trent, past the pad, like blast. three 0 after like twenty and that. I've got, I'm sure I've got videos of him like apologising and stuff, but. They might, oh, years ago, I'm not sure if I still have them, but... Uh, Are you sure Trent's not going to come back and no, no, give you some stick about that? There's no chance, because he knows, <laughs> he, knows, he knows the deal. <laughs> Let's move into some, some of your other interests. We know you're a big golf fan. Yeah. Talk about your upcoming um, golf event, mm. Madison Invitational, on behalf yep. of Sophie Spark Foundation. Yep. Talk about that. Yeah, so just an idea that, that we had, me and my team, to... Uh, yeah, just do it. I'm a big golf fan, like you said. I went to the golf on Sunday at Wentworth, the, the BMW PGA Championship, which was which was really cool. Got to like go behind the scenes, the VIP stuff, which was like to see them hit it up close. Like got to walk the fairways behind uh, Tyrrell Hatton and John Rahm. So I'm watching their shots from from yard meters away, you know. And very interesting as a golf fan to see how good they are up close. It's uh, quite surreal. Um, but yeah, the charity golf day, just because, yeah, I love, love playing golf. I'm still, I've, uh, Sophie passed away a few years ago now, but um, I'm still in contact with her family, which is, which is really nice and got a great relationship with, their, with Sophie's parents. Um, and they, they, asked, they kindly asked me to be uh, Connor's godfather, which is their, which is their youngest boy. So um, we have a really tight relationship and just something I wanted to do for them. Um, Sophie's got her own thing, which is called Sophie Sparkle, but... Um, 
the Norfolk almost, I'm not sure the actual specific name of it, but they look at, they will look after and distribute the money to, to kids who have similar stuff that Sophie had, bone, uh, bone cancer and stuff. I don't know if you've seen, but Sophie's leg had to be almost like amputated and turned around and stuff. And, but she was brilliant. Like she took it all in her stride. She, yeah. Like we often joked about, she was the only like, player in the world who could back heel it forwards, you know, <laughs> because her leg was twisted. Yeah. Um, because she had that type of personality, you know? So, uh, yeah, just to have a good day with, with lots of familiar faces, lots of big names. Yeah. Um, and raise some money for, for a good cause, yeah. I mean, besides yourself, you're pretty confident, so I'm sure you're going to back yourself always. But besides yourself, talk about who some of the other top footballer golfers are. Um, well, I, yeah, I can cut. I know, like, like Gareth Bale's really good, and I've yeah. never actually played with him or seen him play, but I've heard he's pretty good. But for, for the lads that I've played with, Harry Kane's a very good golfer. He's a very low, low handicapper. He can hit it a long way as well, very powerful. Um, a few others, well, there's a few coming to the golf day actually. I think hopefully obviously it's difficult with uh, other footballers because our schedules are not all the same in terms yeah. of when we play our games and stuff. Who For you example, like Declan was going to play, but um, Arsenal play that day, so it's, it hasn't worked out. But got some big names coming. Uh, did you ask who? Yeah, who've you got? Got to come get down? on the Instagram, mate. We're revealing as we go. <laughs> I can't I can't let you into all the secrets, can I? So okay, cool. uh, I got mean, a couple of actors as well and, and, and oh, some musicians. Oh no, this stuff, is about so, to be. Uh, it should be a good day. Yeah. Hollywood on 18 holes. Mm. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's go right into the fashion. Um, when did you really first start tapping into fashion and, you know, having a passion for it? Um, passion for fashion. That should be the headline. <laughs> I'd, I don't know, to be fair. It's a good question. Um, well, if you ask me, I'd say I'd, I've been fashionable forever. But, really? Uh, if I look back at some of my outfits from back in the day and, and across the years, I probably would disagree with that, even myself. How does that look? What's that? Uh, now, you know what fashion's jeans like. Jeans and Astros. Fashion, <laughs> fashion come, comes in swings and, and roundabouts, doesn't it? it uh, they'll be out for years and it'll come back in. Like, if you had said to me, how far should we go back? If you had said to me eight years ago when I was 18 years old that you're going to like really big baggy jeans that have no fit and are not slim, I would have said no, but then... A few years ago, they, they came back in uh, and I really liked it and now I wear them, but... And I look back at the time when I was 18 wearing really tight skinny jeans and I'm like, what was I doing, you know? Because that's, that's what fashion is. But um, a passion for it. No, I just enjoy I just enjoy wearing clothes that I like, that make me feel good. That, and that's the beauty of fashion, I guess. Like, everyone in, the, everyone in the room will be wearing something different, but that's what they feel comfortable in. That's what they want to wear and that is what fashion is, I guess. And, and that's, that's, it's all about how... how how it makes you feel in the clothes you wear and how you represent yourself. So uh, nothing too deep. Just I enjoy I enjoy wearing clothes and, and, and finding brands that that are a bit different that people may not know about or, or something and and like how I look in it. And that, that's the basis of it, really. Recently, there's been a big kind of resurgence on players getting involved in fashion mm. and also self-expression through fashion. What would you kind of attribute that to? No, I think the self-expression stuff is 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 beautiful. Really, we see it in, like, in the NBA, and you see it with some clubs now, where lads are allowed to turn up to to games in their own clothes, which is which is a positive in my eyes because you get to wear what, whatever you want and how what you feel free. I also understand that clubs want a team to be a team and, and wear the club colours and the, the club tracksuit or the club suit or whatever that is. I think that's absolutely fine. I'm not. I know some people have said about fashion that oh, clubs need to let players wear their own stuff because, because that's what people, people are interested to see that side, which is why I think you'll see a lot of players these days putting more Instagram posts out that, in clothes that they, they're wearing because they want to show, they want to show off how they dress because that's what, that's what they like, you know, and, and that's the self-expression stuff you're talking about. And you probably get more of that because clubs make players wear track suits a lot, yeah. I think, because then it means they have to go off and do their own thing away from that, you know? So it's a, it's a bit of a balance of that. I don't mind either. I like to sometimes get some nice photos done with my friends in, in outfits that I've picked out that I like. Some people like to wear their outfits and be a bit more low key and not take pictures and just go about it subtly, which is fine as well. So that's the beauty of fashion. It's just, and, and self-expression, it's just whatever you want to, whatever you want to do, whatever makes you feel good. So we've seen Barcelona start up with their tunnel fits. Mm. You know, that's also in the MLS. 
you know, even at Spurs, you guys have your, uh, you know, kind of walk-in videos on your training days. Mm. If the Premier League were to introduce tunnel fits, how would you come looking on a Sunday or Saturday game day? You're going to go looking relaxed or really dress it up? It just depends how I feel. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's the thing. Like, I, I'm very relaxed about it, you know. It's, uh, I would just wear whatever I feel is, is comfortable on that day. Sometimes, sometimes you wake up and you think, oh, I, wanna, I might want to dress up a bit today. Look smart, look cash, yeah. whatever I feel on the day. Um, and hopefully try and pull it off. But that's, that's, what, that's what you like doing. That's what <laughs> Footballer Fits is all about. That's uh, for, the criti- for the critique on the gram. But um, no, yeah, it depends. Depends whatever I felt comfortable wearing on that day. Just coming off England, do you? You know, there's a few stylists in the, in the change room. Mm. Besides yourself, again, <laughs> talk about, give me your top three stylists in the England dressing room. This is going to cause some upsets, isn't it? Hey, listen, um, this is football of fit, so we want to hear it first. Yeah, okay. In no, in no particular order, though, I'll give you three that I like anyway. Go ahead. Um, I'd say Jude. Jude? I'd say my boy Jude, yeah. I like how he dresses because I just think he always looks clean. Yeah. He always looks, he always looks well put together. Sometimes it might not be the loudest, brightest outfit where people are talking about it, but it goes under the radar. It just always looks, always looks clean and smooth. So I like, I like his style, especially because some of the stuff he wears... I would I would wear so I'm probably a bit biased towards that but um, two more I like the way Chili dresses Ben Chilwell yeah Shout again chili. clean always always looks well always looks well put together um, and again similar to myself I think in terms of <laughs> some people wear stuff where I think that looks really cool but I wouldn't wear that you know but it mm. suits them you know yeah. Uh, so some of the stuff like, like you mentioned Memphis and 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 the Barcelona Kunde, he 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 dresses in a way which yeah, he expresses got. himself and he looks really cool. But I wouldn't wear, you know, just because mm. it's not me. So I'd say Jude and Chile. Me last one. Ah, <sighs> one more. I'm trying to just go through the the squad. I might have missed someone. And I would say Mason Mount. Yeah. Yep. Again, just because. It's what he's got. I'm probably warming to them three because uh, I probably see most similarity to style to them three. So, okay, Jude, Chili, Mace. You're that's not a bad. That's not a bad top three. Yep, I'm happy with that three. All right, now let's take it a step further outside of the England camp. What other ballers out there do you kind of like the look of their fashion and you know, tip your hat to? You? I wish I'd been told that this question was being asked because then, you know, when you get put on the spot, sometimes yeah, you yeah, miss yeah, someone yeah, to later yeah, on, I'll yeah. think, oh, why didn't I say him? <laughs> um, I, 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 one thing I would say is I love Karen Benzema. Ooh. Purely just because, not necessarily always the way he dresses, which he dresses well, but just the way he puts together all his stuff for the ground. The confidence. The, yeah, the confidence, like what he wears, he wears it with a bit of a, with his chest out, a little bit of, not arrogance, but border, borderline, you know, like. You need that. And though. he looks cool, yeah. Uh, I think he looks really well in all the videos he puts together. Um, someone that gets said quite regularly, Joe Willock, yeah. Um, always looks clean and what he posts and stuff, always looks well, really like how he dresses. Again, it's some, he's someone who expresses himself. Um, in how he dresses, you know. Joe, I don't know Joe that well. I've obviously met him a good few times and stuff, but um, not, I don't know him, like, personally too well, but, um, but expresses himself in how he dresses. So, uh, big thumbs up for, for Joe. And then I would say Reese Nelson as well at, at Arsenal. I really like Reese. I was in the under 21s, Reese. Great guy. Really, really, really nice boy. Um, Humble, well spoken, proper nice guy. Really got a lot of time for Reese, and, and again, the way he dresses is uh, is really cool. Now, when it comes to you know you picking out your outfits, what are you you know more so focusing on? Are you looking at the shoes, the jackets, you know your pants, you know accessories maybe, whether that's your bag. You know we've all seen you come to England camp with your with your Louis. 
with mm. your luggage, what, what are you most looking for? Are you kind of going for clean and simple or are you looking for those statement pieces? Always depends, always depends on the on the vibe, you know? Mm. It always depends on what the what the motive is or what the uh, what I'm going towards, what the event is or, like for example, if I'm turning up to England, I never, <laughs> I always forget to take a tracksuit home. <laughs> um, but like if I'm going to England, I'm only going to St. George's, so I won't wear what I would wear to go on a night out just because it's not, you want to still be professional and, and be and look like you're you don't want to feel overdressed and I would never turn up to St George's to represent my country if, or in a crazy night out outfit you know because that doesn't that wouldn't make any sense I'd look like a bit of a wally so um but yeah it all depends I, I love I love shoes yeah I love trainers I, I think trainers is really important um but then again just making sure it all flows and, and whatever I, I feel like goes the good thing about fashion is no one can tell you it's wrong, you know? So, um, but I'd say probably if I had to pick one thing, I would say shoes is really important. Shoes and trousers, shoes yeah. and pants, because how your, tr I like how your trousers <laughs> sits on your trainer, you know, like little stuff like that. Like for example, great example, <laughs> Puma. Shout, Shout out Puma. Out Puma. Shout uh, out great Puma. example, just how it sits over the shoe, you know? I think that's important on how it, how it looks. Um, and the same would go for like, if I was getting measured up for a suit or something like that, you know? It's, you want to look down and feel like you, you like how it looks because it's how you're representing yourself. So. Yeah, my stuff. Game day. Everyone always wonders what the ballers are carrying in their, day, their game day bags. Mm -hmm. So give us your five must-haves for game day. Okay, well, I, I always have my wash bag, obviously, which will have all my toiletries in, but then I will normally take a duffel, which will consist of hairspray, <laughs> a hair dryer. What? Just because you know, if you go, if we have a game and we go away, it's not the the hotel that we stay in won't always have a hair dryer. Okay, that's you know? fair. So when I want to style my hair, you I kind of need the hair dryer when I've got out of the shower. So Whip out the bag. Um, a deck of cards. Really? Yeah, yeah. Just in case you want a game of poker on the coach, something like that. Yeah. Uh, iPad. Vital, just in case the that's telly doesn't Netflix. have. Exactly. You've got Netflix, YouTube, whatever. The telly might not have that in the hotel. Uh, what did I give you there? Four? Yeah, you four? gave me four. We need one more. Spare pair of pants, maybe? <laughs> Normally helps, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, spare pair of Puma boxers, great fit. Fit Shout really well. You get them on the Puma, website. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, five there for you. Well, listen, Madis, thank you for your time. And listen, we're all looking forward to you uh, balling out for the rest of the season. Thank you, mate. Thank you, man.